Hi everyone, so today we will be focusing on Google Jamboard updates for 2020 in the month of August. If you want to see these updates yourself, you can always go to google.com and type in Jamboard updates and click the first link you see. It should be the first link you see. And if it's not, you can always look for a link that rhymes with support dot google dot com slash jamboard so once that's open you will then see a list of um, items there and the latest one which in this case is august 2020 is the latest updates for google jamboard so i'm going to click that now so we can see the updates for this month and this year and as it states there, we're going to be focusing on the Z order controls, the text boxes, and the shapes as the new additions for Jamboard in August 2020. So let's just dive right into it now. Looking over here to the left, you can see we have two new icons on the toolbar, which is the shapes icon and the text box icon. So clicking on this icon here, you can see that it gave us about eight options to play with. And I'm going to select the circle shape first and then start to drag that over my objects here. Now it covered everything and this is not exactly what I want. I can come to the top and select the border color, which is also new. Um, it came with the shapes um, feature as well. And I'm, I'm gonna select the green border just to keep with the frog theme, but the infill, I'm gonna make that transparent so I can see the objects here. Now, if I were to try to move you know, the objects around, it just wouldn't happen because this object is still, the circle being the object is still sitting on top of everything. So I would need to adjust the ordering of the objects on my screen. And this is called Z order control. Now with the ordering, I can choose to send objects to the back or let them stay to the front, bring them to the front, sorry, or you know adjust them somewhere in between the front and the back. And to access that, you can just click the three dots on top here and then come down to order. And for this example, I'm going to send it all the way to the back. Now I can select the objects here as you can see, and move them around. I want to move these out of the circle because this is a drag and drop activity. And I would want my students to drag them into the circle and place them in the correct order using the arrow shape as well to give direction um, of the um, life cycle of the frog. So here we are. All right, so the one last thing I want to do here is to uh, give it a title let, to let them know this is the life cycle of the frog. And I'm going to type here the life cycle of frog. And I can choose to align this text where the um, right align, which is already what it is, left align, sorry, which is already um, the alignment it is in right now, then center align, and then there's right align as well, but I'm gonna keep it as center align. And then I want to change the font color. As you can see, they still haven't given us much options here to work with, but nevertheless, we appreciate it. <laughs> so I'm gonna select green just to stay with that froggy theme and place that in the center here. All right, and I can choose to change this font um, size as well. Um, there are a couple of options they give us, like display, which is a very large font, um, title, and then there is subtitle. And I'm gonna leave it there as I subtitle and place it here. And as I said, my students can drag and drop these objects within the circle and use the arrow shape to give, um, you know, just to show the direction of the life cycle of the frog, okay? just want to show you some other examples of how I use the text box and the shapes update. So I'm going to click on my frame arrow here, my next arrow. And here I'm using the text box again to give this uh, frame a title, butterfly life cycle. And I'm also using shapes to sit behind the objects here as part of the design for this frame, as well as the arrows to give direction as to the, the direction of the life cycle, as I asked my students to do in the first frame. 
frame. Going to the next frame, I want to demonstrate how we can use the Z order controls. This sun is sitting on top of um, some clouds, which I, you know, I wanted to say at the back of the clouds. Um, to adjust that, I can just hit the three dots as I just did, come down to order, and then send to back. Now, there is a shortcut in doing this. Instead of you know going through those steps all the time, you can just select the object and hold the CTRL button and click the down arrow, which is to send it to the back, and then hit the up arrow, which is to bring it forward. So just let me correct myself. It's the CTRL plus the down arrow to send it backward, and the CTRL plus the up arrow, which is to bring it forward. And then adjust to bring it forward one position or to send it back one position. So let's execute that right now. So I'm hitting the CTRL plus the up arrow and it is taking a while to come forward. And I'm glad that this happened because sometimes the positioning may not be, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, um, but it may be the first object starts at zero and the second object starts at five and the third object may start at seven and so on and so on, skipping um, some positions there. So the arrows help you to you know get through that uh, positioning much faster with it rather than having to go through the steps so i'm pressing it like numerous times here until i have it at the front at the front of, of, of my objects you can see the shortcut right here with um, CTRL plus shift and the up arrow to bring it all the way to the front. Control plus the up arrow to bring it forward one step. Control plus the down arrow to bring it you know, send it backward one position and control shift and the down arrow to send to the back all the way to the back. All right. So you can play room with that. I'm going to send it all the way to the back because that is where I want it. Control shift and the down arrow. And here we are. Yes. And you can see here, I also use my text box and my shape as a part of my um, layout or decoration here to create a banner. You can use that in that way as well. So feel free to explore these updates and let me know how you're using them in the comment section below. I would love to hear uh, about your creative uh, assignments and how your students use these um, updates in your assignments as well. So we hope you enjoyed our short Google Jamboard update. We invite you also to subscribe to our channel and remember to share whatever content you find useful with other educators as well. Until next time, be safe.